Ichiwa. I'm Chaplain Mark Johnston and we're coming to you today from beautiful Azamizo Park here in beautiful Japan and wanted to speak with you a little bit more about resiliency. When I was a little boy, one of the first jobs I ever had was um, mowing grass. There was a lady in our church, Miss um, Barker. Uh, she was a widow and uh, she had a fairly large yard and she needed someone in the church to come and cut her grass for her. So my dad and I, we'd load the lawnmower into the trunk of the car, let the handle stick out and tie it down with a rope and drive over to Miss Barker's house and I would cut the grass. I was about 12, I think. My dad would do the trimming in the yard and then always after we were finished, we would go to the Dairy Queen and uh, he would get a milkshake, which he called the only kind of milkshakes there are are chocolate, according to my dad. But I always got a vanilla milkshake because that's what I liked. And then we always, after we were finished, would go down to our church where my dad would spend about an hour and I would help him an hour and a half picking up trash around the building. He, now, no one asked him to do this and no one told him it needed to be done. But he wanted, when people came to church on Sunday, he wanted it to be clean in the parking lot that was there and uh, make sure that people uh, had an enjoyable experience. Now he did that because he thought it was something that needed to be done. He didn't do it because it was required. He didn't do it because someone told him to do it. And he didn't have the excuse of saying, well, it's not my job, it's not my job. He just did it. That taught me a lot about life. It taught me a lot about setting an example. My dad is 90 years old now and when he was about 80 years old, he was telling me about, he uh, came to a revelation about some things. He'd go, he's a, a fix-it man. He used to be a mechanical engineer and he would work in people's, he would go in people's houses to fix things for them. Like if they had a broken window or a broken faucet or um, they had something loose in the house that needed to be fixed. My dad can fix most anything. And he would go over to the old people's houses. Of course, he was older than them. And he would work in their houses to fix things. And he said, inevitably, Somehow, the talk would turn somehow toward the person who came there before to try to fix it, and they would say some pejorative term about their race or about their color or something else. And my dad said, um, you know, he was born in 1930 in Alabama, and he said he just put up with it for a long time. He said well, when he turned 80, he realized, why am I putting up with this? And so he would say to the people, this is your house. And you can say whatever you want to in your own house. I don't know why you would use these terms, but you can do that. And, and I'll, but if you're going to, I'm going to leave. Now I'll stay here and fix whatever you want me to fix for free. But if you're going to use those kind of terms, I'm not going to stay here because it's wrong to talk about people that way. You see, it's, it's not your verbiage. It's not your understanding of how the world works. It's not what you say that's going to influence your children and those around you so much as what you do. They're going to see that. And if you use certain phrases and shoot certain words around people, even in your own home, it's going to cause problems. And if you want to change the world, that's where we change it. Now you may think that's a little thing. You may think, so what? He told them to use the right words. So what? You won't change their hearts. You might. You might find that the standard that you walk by is the standard that you accept. Yoi Ichinichio, have a nice day.